Canon R5 isn't cheap, but it's offering quite a few upgrades and leaving the original EOS R in the dust. I actually never really purchased EOS R in the past. Um, this has been lent to me, uh, loaned to me from Canon. So, but I'm really, really, really thinking of selling all my aging gear and getting this. So the improved image quality coupled with 45 quality megapixels and vast improvements in video codecs, image quality, this is the camera to beat this year. I bet a lot of Canon slash Sony users will be coming back to this camera body. I've been a Canon fan since the very first DSLRs like the Canon D30 released back in the year 2000. I have many aging lenses, uh, which you have seen in this video right here. They need to be replaced to take advantage of the new RF mount and wider apertures. Going with the camera like the R5 with so many megapixels, you can almost get away with using very fast primes instead of zooms and cropping images in post to achieve desired zoom setting. For example, you could use a 35mm f1.4 lens and just crop it all the way in to 85mm. Canon R5 is also an incredibly capable video and photo camera, actually both. So if you're a hybrid shooter, you can't go wrong. It's the most significant Canon camera release of this decade. However, if you're only a video shooter, uh, R6 may be a more adequate and saves you some money. The only thing missing would be the ability to shoot 4K 120 for the really nice slow 4K slow motion video and also missing the 8K video, which not many people are gonna find useful and shoot anyway, as it gobbles up storage like crazy and now no one has the, has the monitors or TVs capable of viewing such footage. Now, one area where 8K might be useful and that's uh, single camera recording, like what I'm doing right now. You could just zoom in digitally like eight times, 8X, and still have great video. I remember when 8K was just starting to be announced. I think that was like four years ago. And what they've done then is split the signal four ways through some kind of multiplexers, demultiplexers, using four, 4K video recorders to be able to record it and play it back. It was like the size of a full tower computer. And now it's all available in the R5 natively. You can shoot 8K if you'd like for, I guess, very specific projects. It's there, but it's not practical yet for many people until the computer storage and processing power catches up as one minute of 8K video can take up to 20 gigabytes. And the camera tends to overheat in 20 minutes or so um, they're supposed to do some firmware upgrades to, it looks like it used to be hard coded 20 minutes through some firmware updates. They're actually shutting down when it actually overheats. So anyway, since I'm not a fan of very compact camera bodies, I'm glad the R5 is a bit bigger than Sony cameras. Check that out. Um, but still they could have made it even a little bigger, like the size of a DSLR, just thicker. I made an external me metal heatsink, uh, like someone did in a video where they hooked up external copper heatsink and I could shoot 8K forever. <laughs> so that uh, no one would be complaining about overheating ever again. I mean, come on, Kenny, this is a very simple upgrade to put a massive heatsink on there and just have the camera actually work forever. Canon R5 up to this point, it seems to be the most capable all-around Canon camera I have handled. Camera that shoots quality videos and photos all in one body. This is a worthy successor to 5D Mark IV. And coupled with the new RF mount, look at that, how wide this mount is. Not as wide as Nikon, but wide enough. With the new RF mount and IBIS in-body image stabilization, it offers so much more. This is the mirrorless Canon 5D Mark V in many ways. Hence, I think they call it R5. The body build quality is superb. It's weather sealed, you know, sealed buttons and stuff and body. 
Size wise, it approaches the size of a 5D or 6D camera. So one thing I'm missing in the new EOS R is the mode button selection. So over here, we gotta go here and use this electronic um, mode button kind of hybrid style with the LCD. Whereas the old ones just had a mode, mode dial that you can just click and dial into a specific mode, you know, program, ap aperture, priority, manual, uh, etc. Okay. Found this incredibly useful and fast. This kind of slows me down a little bit. I got to look down and to see what I'm changing. Okay. It was just easier for me to see what shooting mode I'm in. Okay. Going back to 8K, if you use a light type of codec, you can even record 8K on a very fast type SD card, like the V60 type. The big issue I have with the ports on this camera is that Canon's choice of building the tiniest HDMI uh, connector into this camera possible. So what were they thinking in my opinion? Panasonic did this in GH4 with so many issues, uh, this was just not a reliable and it was prone to failure connection so they should have went with the bigger full-size HDMI connection like Panasonic did with the GH5 they learned their lesson with bigger full-size HDMI connection like Panasonic did on the GH5 the HDMI port connector is part of the main board so any damage there will be devastating for the camera and probably cost like thousand dollars or more to fix it I'm just speculating here, of course, okay? So the battery life is improved by about 15%. Actual battery is improved by 15%. And you can identify the new batteries by the hologram. I must say, I didn't like the multi-function bar on the original EOS R, and I am glad Canon replaced it with the traditional multi-point selector, and it's a much welcome upgrade, okay? One great little feature is the audio annotation of the fic uh, pictures. That has been on camera, Canon cameras for years. You simply hold down the rake button in playback mode and you can record a short audio with the same name as photo. So that you can record your thoughts about the specific photo you just took. It's great, especially later if you want to kind of relive your memories. Simply find a picture you like press and hold the rake button you'll see a little timer pop up and then as you let go it's done and recording okay the speed this camera has remarkable speed using the digic 10 processor it's the same processor as the latest 1dx dslr my favorite upgrade to the canon r5 and r6 is of course the in body image stabilization first for canon Good stabilized image is indispensable in low light conditions and for video especially. This addition will enable you to breathe some new life into the old lenses you have. Like the old lenses like this one here for example 17 to 40 f4 lens. Although um, the RF mount will give you better image quality than using the adapters. Okay, Remember for ultimate image quality, it's best to upgrade to RF lenses, like this one here, okay? But many times you won't notice the difference. Um, you know, it depends if, uh, if you're a pixel peeper or you grew out of it and you just look at the picture as a whole or you look at the very specific image and, and just obsess about quality. If you really just kind of take in and your entire image is amazing then there's really no reason to pixel peep you know just go out there and, and get shooting okay while using the camera in photo mode it may seem that stabilizing system is not really working but it's designed to be engaged once the shutter button is pressed okay other times it's uh, it's simply there getting ready for you to take the shot while shooting video you'll notice it's stabilizing a lot of your camera shake no matter how great any camera is, without accurate autofocus, it's worthless. Great focus on any camera is priority number one. This camera ranks right behind Canon 1DX Mark III when it comes to focus performance. You can fine tune autofocus to your desired setting in the autofocus menu. The eye autofocus works especially well and I found that it did not have, that I didn't have to worry about images whether my images were in focus or not because it was just spot on 
it is such a huge relief when you can shoot portraits and not worry about focus because you can finally trust the camera to do its job. I think that the R5 should be geared mainly toward the photography crowd and video shooters that can take breaks, obviously. If you're continuously rolling, the camera will probably experience an uh, overheating issue. You know, it's an excellent camera for portraits and landscape photographers. It seemed that Canon advertised its video capabilities much more than photo, especially the 8K, which some of us will struggle to find useful right now. Okay? If it wasn't for the 4K 120, the Canon R6 would be a clear choice for videographers. The images are quite clean and offer better dynamic range than the original US R. The lack of distracting noise in this R5, up to ISO 6400, and the images are very actually usable uh, with ISO up to 12800. Basically, you know, with this camera, with in-body image stabilization and great glass, or any glass even, you can shoot handheld even at night, or with candle night. With the right settings, you'll get brighter images with better quality uh, than what you can see with your own eyes. I mean, when you record with this, I would definitely go for 4K high quality setting, as the 4K standard is going to disappoint you a bit if you look closely. It's lacking detail and video comes out soft and washed out, but yeah, guess what? Doesn't overheat the camera. For uh, ultimate quality, shoot in flat, picture profile, and graded in post. So one final thing I gotta say, Canon, what were you thinking? Seriously, in 2020, why are we still getting a camera that overheats? Overheating issue, Canon promises us, should be improved upon with future firmware releases. 4K high quality, which may overheat your camera, seems that you have about 45 minutes of continuous shooting time before the camera overheats, that is in warmer environments. This could cause you to miss big shots and in camera costing this much should not be happening as easily. I've never, like I mentioned before, complained about the camera or DSLR body being too big like this one here. So why did I have to make these mirrorless cameras smaller and prone to overheating? You know, some of these lenses are bigger than a camera these days. You know, let's take the grip off here. What's with, look at this, the lens is bigger than a camera. What's with the camera bodies being too small to be able to operate properly? Overall, it's a great camera and I feel that any photographer will use it without any camera restrictions. If you however want to use it for main video camera, the overheating issue and the limit of 30 minutes of recording per clip may become an issue, okay? So in conclusion, the Canon R5 X, you know, this is the camera of the year. It has great image quality for photo and video, good dynamic range, and variety of options for any type of photography. Also, many, many native lenses with the RF mount give you extreme quality over the older lenses, okay? And the Canon, I must say, um, talk to some uh, Nikon shooters, and it feels just right in your hands. It handles better than a Nikon Z6 or Z7. So I actually have a Nikon Z6 right here. So although with the grip it's fine, let's take the grip off. So notice how much smaller this is. And I'll be doing a, I'll be doing a video comparing these two later, okay? I'm glad that Canon, like over here I'm able to, look, no rest for the pinky. You can kind of rest your pinky here. This is a huge investment, but it will pay off if you just use the camera. It's just a, such an excellent overall image acquisition tool available these days. So, in any case, you know, thanks for watching. If you found this useful, subscribe, rate, and share. The more views I get, obviously, the one I'll be begging here, the more content I can produce. I've been kind of slacking this year because it's been really, really busy. All right, so in any case, rate, subscribe, and share. Ask me any questions. I'll try to answer all questions below. See you. Thanks. Stay healthy and safe. Bye-bye.